Today I'm going to blow your mind with three plant-based bacon alternatives. When people start eating a vegetarian diet, the one food that's typically their fallback is bacon. There's just something so irresistible about that smoky, umami deliciousness that gets people over to the meat side again, which is totally fine. But today I'm going to present three plant-based alternatives that are going to blow your mind. I'm really excited. So the first thing we need to do is preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then we're going to mix up our marinade. So it starts with three tablespoons of expeller pressed coconut oil. I'm using expeller pressed coconut oil because I don't want that really intense coconut flavor. I just want, just want the deliciousness of fat. There we go. Then I'm going to put in one quarter cup of pure maple syrup. I'm from Canada and I grew up eating maple flavored bacon, which is kind of a little bit odd maybe to a lot of people, but there's again something about this sweet savory thing that happens um, with bacon, even when it's not maple bacon, there's, I don't know, something about the balance of flavors that really, really works. So for salt, because bacon is of course very salty, we have one quarter cup of tamari. I like to think of tamari as the Cadillac of soy sauce. It's just a little more refined. And it's also wheat-free and gluten-free. So if you are celiac or sensitive to wheat, make sure you pick up tamari and read the label because some tamaris are maybe not such good quality and they are brewed with wheat. So make sure you pick that up. Um, this is one teaspoon of garlic powder. I'm using garlic powder today because it evenly coats all of the ingredients as opposed to getting big hits of garlic. That's not something we're after here. Then we have one teaspoon of freshly ground black pepper. And I will say there is a huge, huge difference between freshly ground black pepper and the stuff you buy pre-ground from the grocery store. The, that powdery gray stuff is pretty flavorless. So get yourself a pepper mill and grind your pepper fresh. It will change your life, I promise. Now, the secret ingredient and the thing that's really important in this recipe is liquid smoke. This is going to give our vegetables and the tempeh an incredible smoky richness. So a lot of people ask me, what the heck is liquid smoke? It's pretty neat actually. What they do is they burn a bunch of very fragrant wood, sometimes mesquite or hickory, and when they put it out, the smoke actually will condense on um, a device that's surrounding the fire, and that condensation runs off and collects into troughs, and that's what liquid smoke is. So it's really just water and smoke. It's a natural product. You really need just a little bit for this, but it makes the recipe 100%. So you can find it at usually gourmet grocery stores or health food stores carry it now and increasingly regular grocery stores. So pick a bottle of that up. It's really worth it. So what I'm going to do now is just whisk up these marinade ingredients, making sure it's all very even. That looks good. The coconut oil tends to sit on the top, so try and whisk it in as much as possible. There we go. Put that up here. The first thing I'm going to cut up is our tempeh. This, my friends, is tempeh. Tempeh is a fermented soybean cake, essentially. So you can see it's like very stuck together. What they do is they cook the soybeans and then inoculate them with a spore that holds them together. So all this white bit in here, um, yeah, it's all, it's binding the beans together. So it is a whole food product and actually I don't eat a lot of soy in my life because typically soy food products are very processed, they're not whole foods any longer, but tempeh is a whole food product and because it's fermented, it's incredibly easy to digest. It's very easy to absorb all those nutrients, and the protein is really high quality. Soybeans have actually one of the highest sources of plant-based protein found in nature. 
So they're really good to add to your diet, but just in small quantities. T people tend to go a little overboard with soy-based products, especially when they start eating plant-based food or vegetarian food. And too much of anything, even if it's good, can put us out of balance a little bit. So my recommendation is if you're gonna have soy products, try some tempeh, miso is another really good option. So that's our tempeh. I'm really cutting everything up into sort of bacon-y strips like this. And that's sort of the width you can see. So because the tempeh actually is a bit thicker than the other vegetables I'm using today, I'm gonna marinate it first. So I'm gonna pour just a little bit of this into my other baking tray here. That looks good. And just show you here. So what I like to do is put it in the marinade and just roll it around a couple times. So that way this, both sides get coated. Like this. Now, you don't have to make all three of these alternatives. So today we're using mushrooms, eggplant, and the tempeh. But you are more than welcome to just use one. I just wanted to demonstrate all three of them for you today, just to give you some inspiration. Um, if you want to do just one, then um, by all means do so. But I will say, if you're using just tempeh, it's a really good idea to let it marinate even overnight. The other vegetables don't need any time at all because um, they have such a high water content and they're not as dense as the tempeh itself. Let's see if I can squeeze one on this side a bit. There we go. And I want to fit this last one in. Let's do it at the top here. That looks good. There. Beautiful. As long as it's sitting in there as much as possible. Perfect. That looks great. So I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes while I prepare the other vegetables. So we have eggplant and mushroom. So this is an eggplant. Try and get yourself an organic one if you can because the skin of the eggplant is actually one of the healthiest parts of it. You can see how deeply pigmented it is. And whenever we see a deeply pigmented food, we know that there are lots of nutrients there. In the case of eggplant, we're looking for anthocyanins. <laughs> and that's a fancy word for a type of antioxidant found in food with um, really dark colors. So think pomegranates, blackberries, blueberries, those kinds of foods. So if you can get an organic eggplant and eat the skin, that is ideal. So what I like to do at the beginning is cut a little bit off the bottom just so it doesn't roll around on me. That's for safety's sake and ease. And then I want to cut relatively thin strips, not too thin so that it falls apart and not too thick that it doesn't cook um, properly. So I'll do a couple more here for you to see. There we go. And then because it's bacon, I'm gonna cut these one more time down the center so we have some long style strips. All right, I'll put this to the side. The eggplant I'm going to do first. And it's a good idea to have a lined baking sheet ready to rock so that you can just dip and place. So let's start here. So what I do is I just roll the eggplant in once or twice and put it on the baking sheet, that's it. So like I said, these don't need very much marinade time, but the tempeh definitely does. So it's worth it to start that one a bit earlier. This already smells so good. That liquid smoke is true magic. And if you're someone who's switching to a plant-based diet, it's a good idea to get some and just throw it into like a soup or a stew or a stir fry. Um, you can, if you're ever grilling fruits and vegetables, for instance, it's a really nice thing just to add a touch of, and really a little goes a long way. You have to be pretty careful with it because it can easily be overpowering. I like this recipe too because typically you need to salt eggplant before you cook it because of its high water content, but here you don't. It's so simple. You just cut it and put it right on the pan. All right. So that looks good for the eggplant. Now, this recipe makes at least two baking sheets worth of, uh, of food, but I'm just gonna do one baking sheet for you today so you can see. So the next ingredient I'm going to use is portobello mushroom. I absolutely love mushrooms because they have such a fantastic texture once they're cooked. They're really chewy and almost meaty themselves. So I just sort of twist off the bottom cap. I can save this for another recipe. 
that's important. And then I'm going to slice these into strips, a little bit thicker than the eggplant. These are going to shrink up a lot. Again, they have a pretty high water content as well, and they tend to get pretty little once they're actually baking. So I'll move this back here and start dipping. There we go. One really groovy fact about mushrooms that I appreciate is that they have a really high vitamin D content. And vitamin D is the nutrient that we get from our skin being exposed to the sun. And the reason that mushrooms have such a high vitamin D content is because they're grown in the shade, so they have to produce their own vitamin D. How awesome is that? Nature is pretty cool. There we go. Little dip and roll. Mm. This recipe is awesome for BLT sandwiches. So, ooh, and a little avocado. So I slice up a couple, a couple uh, pieces of sourdough bread, toast that, and then lots of lettuce or spinach, some tomatoes, some avocado, and then some slabs of this blow your mind bacon. It is unbelievable. Okay, so I'll do one more. The full recipe for this is good for two portobello mushrooms, pretty large size, one medium eggplant, and 200 grams or a small package of tempeh. So you can see I have marinade left, and that would be for the other veggies. So I'll put the tempeh on the sheet now, baking sheet with the other things. Again, if we had a little more time, I'd probably leave this for longer or even overnight. There we go. And we want a pretty hot oven for this because we want to get those sugars caramelizing, that maple syrup. Mmm. This is going to be so good. I'll move this down so I can get one more at the top here. There we go. All right. And another tip, I would probably put the tempeh on a separate sheet because it's going to take longer to bake. But it's not a problem in this case. I'll probably just take off the mushrooms and the eggplant a bit before. They take around 15 minutes to cook. And the tempeh can take anywhere from 30 to 35 minutes, depending on how like caramelly you like it and depending on how long you've marinated it for. But that's the recipe so far. Super easy. So I'm going to go put these in the oven for about 15 minutes, check on the mushrooms and the eggplant, and um, yeah, I'll show you when they're all finished. So my bacon is ready. There it is in all its smoky glory. So I'll start plating this up. I just want you to be able to see off the baking sheet what it looks like. This one's a bit stuck, of course. Here we go. So, oh God, these smell incredible. So the really cool thing about these and doing all, all three of them is that some of the pieces are actually really crisp. So they have this like incredibly crunchy edge to them, which is awesome. And then others are actually quite soft. So you get these wonderful texture variations, which I absolutely love. Mm. Yeah, and then some of, some of the time, you'll get like a really crisp edge on one of them, and then the, the center is tender. Mm. They're absolutely amazing. And you'll notice on the mushrooms, the gill side actually gets really almost thickened up and becomes really, really chewy. And then the center of the mushrooms is really tender. And you'll see how much they shrink. Isn't that incredible? So if you're doing mushrooms for this, for this whole recipe, you could probably do at least four to five um, large portobello mushrooms for the whole batch. Oh my gosh, I want to eat all of these right now, but I won't. So there's the mushrooms, and here's the tempeh. The tempeh, you can actually broil this at the end if you really want to sort of crisp up the edges, but I find it's delicious just the way it is. Look at those beauties. Oh, this is a good one. It's really crisp on the inside there. So there are your mind-blowing plant-based bacon alternatives. I'm so confident you're going to love this recipe just as much as I do. And the cool thing about these are there's so many different applications. 
They're delicious in a sandwich, of course, like I mentioned, on the side of a traditional breakfast. But I also really like to serve these um, all folded through a salad, even with grains or lentils or chickpeas. They're so, so delicious. And if you've never tried tempeh before, this is a great application because it's so deeply rich and umami and smoky. It's a great place to start with tempeh. That's it. I know you're going to love these. Can't wait for you to try them.